Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be explaining the contents of the Linux file system. The Linux file system dates back to the Unix days, which is like 1960s and 70s, but many of the folders are in abbreviated form. Whether that's to save typing or to save memory space, who can say, but yeah, most of the folders are like three to four letters long. Starting with the slash bin folder, which is your binary files, the program are executable files which are available to all users. It includes some basic GNU command line utilities, which are essential to the system, such as cat, grep, echo, ls, nano, etc. And it also includes some GUI applications. Slash boot, files which are essential to the booting of the system, such as VM liners, the Linux kernel, system.map, memory locations of all variables and functions, initrd.img, the initial RAM disk, temporary root file system, and you also got grub in the EFI. Slash dev or devices, the peripherals and component devices on your system. The names of the devices have been somewhat abbreviated, so you've got JS0 for analog joystick, NVMe, actually that's fairly self explanatory, the NVMe drives, SD for the hard drives or SATA hard drives and solid state disks. There is one difference with the hard drives compared to most of the other devices in that they're ordered alphabetically instead of numerically. So you've got SDA, SDB, SDC, etc. Whereas a lot of the other devices are just numbered numerically in sequence. Slash dev slash loop is a fake mounting point. For example, it would allow mounting files as folders. In Ubuntu, it's used specifically to mount snap based applications. And slash dev slash null is a black hole into nothing. So you could output error messages or even just normal echo messages to slash dev slash null and they will go nowhere into nothing slash dev slash random or slash dev slash u random are random number generators and slash dev slash zero is just zeros that's different to null in that zero is something null is nothing slash etc is configuration files for all programs although you have user specific configs which are stored in slash home slash username slash dot config which i'll come on to right now because the next folder is slash home so home folder is users, documents, pictures, videos, etc. And it does contain user specific config settings, which are stored in .config as well as other dot or hidden folders. Slash lib contains shared library files and kernel modules. And library files often end with .so, which is shared objects. And that is equivalent to .dll in Windows. A couple of specifics to mention, slash lib slash modules are the kernel modules slash lib slash x86 64 as well as slash lib 32 and slash lib 64 are architecture specific libraries slash media contains removable media such as cd dvd and usb flash drives if you want to mount fixed hard drives use the slash mnt folder which contains the sart hard drives and solid state disks slash opt are additional applications which are not part of the default system it is an alternative to slash bin slash user bin slash user local, which I'll come on to the USR folder later in this video. Slash proc is a pseudo file system which provides an interface to kernel viewer processes. For example, the current running applications. And all these numbers here are referred to as the PID or process ID. Slash root is the root user's home folder. Although for distributions like Ubuntu, which have no root user, it'll be empty. Now it's not the same as slash home slash root. Slash sbin is very similar to the slash bin folder in that it contains binary and program executable files, although these are reserved for access by the root user or the sudo user. It includes some of the GNU basic command line utilities such as block ID, BLK ID, IP tables, mount, user add, and vsudo. It also contains some GUI applications, although not as many as slash bin. Although that is fair and reasonable because not many GUI applications are reserved for just root access. Slash SRV is served data, so it contains data which is served by the system, such as a website or FTP server. Although you have slash var slash www, which is also a location for where website data can be stored. Slash sys or sys file system is a pseudo file system which provides an interface to the kernel view of hardware devices in a way that does sound very similar to slash dev, although it contains a wider range of devices, such as the CPU and firmware. Slash temp is a temporary folder where all the files are deleted upon shutdown or reboot. 
I've used it a few times when I'm doing videos, I'm just showing it an example script, but I have no intention of actually keeping it long term. Slash USR or user folder or Unix system resources. Hmm, not sure on that one. Anyway, it contains programs and libraries installed by the distribution, with the exception of one folder, and I'll come on to that in a moment. Slash user slash bin, very similar to the slash bin folder, so that's applications which are available to all users. Slash user slash sbin is very similar to slash sbin, so it's applications which are reserved for access by the root user. Slash usr slash games is a specific folder for games. Slash usr slash include are C header files. Slash usr slash lib is very similar to slash lib folder in that it contains library files. That would be the .so files or shared objects. The unusual folder slash usr slash local is a folder for anything installed locally by the system administrator. So that is not touched by the Linux distribution. And it contains a very similar folder structure to the slash usr folder directly above it. And lastly, slash usr slash share manual pages and other documents for certain applications. And the final folder on the Linux system is slash var, or variable. So it contains the variable data files which may regularly change, such as log files and printer spool. And a few specifics from the folder is slash var slash backups, so that's backups of key system files such as slash etc slash shadow and slash etc slash groups, which is the password and user file respectively for a system. Slash var slash cache is cache data for applications. Slash var slash crash is crash data dumps. Slash var slash lib dynamic libraries, which are listed by the owning application. Slash var slash lock are locked data files. So it could be locked, say, for like a USB device. Tends not to be anywhere near as many files as you would find on a Windows system, which get locked, particularly by Microsoft Office. Slash var slash log is log data. Slash var slash spool is spool files for like cron, mail, and printing. And slash var slash temp or TMP, temporary files which need to exist for longer than the slash TMP folder allows. So that was the Linux file system. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.